Hey everybody, thanks for being so patient and understanding. Um, we're fine here, everyone's safe, but we really appreciate your thoughts, prayers, concerns, all those good vibes, so thank you. All right, um, week five was supposed to be reevaluating or reorientating you to the course. Um, we've really talked a lot already about building character, but here are my very, very favorite tips. You need to choose pieces for submission. Now, we're gonna talk about things from a submission point of view, digital submissions via actually going in person or getting a call back and going in and actually doing a screen test. Okay, there's different procedures. We've talked about this. But building a character works the same way it always has. It's never really, really changed. You need to first understand yourself. It's really tough to do that at your age, but not impossible. And most of you are already aware of this, if not all of you are aware of this, so don't even stress it, okay? Now, how to build a strong character? Well, you need to ask yourself those fast five questions, okay? Who am I? Where am I? What am I doing, okay? What do I want and how will I get what I want? It's also a sixth question that you need to keep in mind, which is, especially when you begin a scene, is where have I just come from? Or what just happened to me before I came into frame, right, for the camera? Okay, this is a camera class, so we're talking specifically about acting for the camera. Now, remember that you have to ask yourself those fast five questions, and then that bonus six is what have I just done? That's gonna really set you apart, is when you can show us the life of the character, sort of from before even the beginning, as they enter the frame, if your character needs to enter into frame. Now, many screen test opportunities, you just stand right in front of the, um, right in front of the camera, and you, if it's a commercial, you'll, you'll look right into the camera, you'll break the fourth wall, you'll look into the camera, and you'll sell it directly to the audience, okay? And in modern contemporary commercial selling, that's what we're doing. But in cinematic character, you know, characterization, you really want to think about um, how the camera angles really tell, help tell the story of the character. Obviously, closer up is a lot more intimate. You can see, you know, um, the camera really represents the human eye. And so it really likes to watch us think. And um, so trying different angles and beginning your scene from... Uh, using different, you know, I'm just holding my phone out straight. I'm not even on a, a gimbal or anything like that. I'm just using my, my hand straight. But beginning with an interesting camera to introduce yourself and your slate in your slating is always a, a, good, a good tip. Um, but in terms of characterization, asking yourself those qu five questions. Um, who am I? What, what am I doing? Where am I? What, you know, do I want? And how do I know what my character wants based on just a few pages, or I may have only have a few lines? Well, the truth is, is that every script is basically just like a mystery novel, and your job is to decode it. It's almost like a, a secret code language. Human beings very rarely, especially as we get older, say exactly what we're thinking and feeling. We learn as we grow up that sometimes total honesty can actually be detrimental to our social interactions, our interpersonal relationships. For example, um, you know, the age old, oh, do I look fat in this? Do you honestly tell that person what you think or do you hold back because you don't wanna hurt that person's feelings? So that's kind of things, things like white lies, lying to protect someone, lying to def in, in defense of other people, for example, you know, lying to a terrorist who's taken you hostage or your family hostage and trying to lie to protect them and their safety. There are gray areas when it comes to this, even though we've all been taught that lying is wrong. So first of all, ask yourself, what is the conflict? What's actually happening? Um, after you've asked yourself the fast five, then ask yourself that man versus, you've done the self versus the self, the man versus self work, or woman versus self, or them, they, right? The person versus themselves internally, what conflict might be going on, what might be brewing. If it's a piece that you're familiar with, um, then you need to think about creative ways to bring new choices into the, the your audition. So think about playing the opposite. Some of those tricks of our sleeves, the actors that we've talked about is playing the opposite. If the character is really throwing themselves, if they're really um, desperate to impress the other the other character in the scene, then maybe pulling back and trying a different, the opposite, uh, making all the opposite physical and emotional tonal choices for the character in their voice. Um, now, unless there's, an ethnicity 
involved. If there's ethnicity and that is uh, delineated in the script and or the casting director has given you specific instructions or requested you to elocute a certain way or try a particular accent or make a specific choice, then you're open, it's completely up to you. Now let's just go back to digital submissions because 90% of what we're doing now is just submitting a tape. Well, they're gonna send you the sides via the casting website usually. You'll probably start your own profile, like if it's backstage, um, you're gonna go on there and submit to them. Now if it's an agency, you're gonna submit a, a tape of yourself, a demo reel of yourself, right? But you need to think about what needs to be in that demo reel, right? Just the same way as we need to think about what's on the resume. What needs to be on the resume is your most recent featured work, any work that you have, right? In your demo reel has to be your most impactful moments, your best acting work. So if you've never done any professional acting yet, that's okay. If you've never done anything for school, that's okay. You have a phone, you have the ability to have somebody record you. You can stage and set your own scenes nowadays pretty easily, as long as you set up the camera angles that help tell the stories. Think about close-ups, you know, wide angles to give us more information, profile views, um, of those over the shoulder shots, just basics of learning those camera, uh, those camera angles and thinking about uh, your acting from the same perspective as the cinematographer is going to be thinking about it. And also thinking about acting in terms of uh, the camera, uh, um, the same way the director is going to think about it. Okay. You're acting for the camera, not for yourself and not for a, a, a theater full of hundreds of people. You have to act out for it. You're going to bring it all in to mostly your eyes, your face is gonna tell this much of the story until we give you those longer um, medium shots and or, you know, full body shots, etc. cetera. Um, so what else, let's see. Now we really need to think about what is the character, when we talk about that, that last question, what am I willing to do or what am I going to do to get what I want? That is the thing, there's an imply, the implication is there's action. And that could mean that there is a tonal action, the voice of the character, that you are changing your voice to become more desperate. Uh, it could be comedic in a comedic way. It could be in a dramatic way. It could also be that you're challenged to just try um, to show desperation in a less obvious or less dramatic, overt way. So think about other ways that people show their desperation, you know, uh, fidgeting physical life to character people do in their behaviors that we be, that we can identify the basic human emotions that you feel like are being expressed in the lines analyze that first find out what exactly the emotions you feel like are being expressed and then re again and decide with a with a the full picture in mind read the entire scene again not just your lines but read the whole scene and now decide whether or not you really feel like that those emotions that you prescribe to the character really makes sense now that you've read the whole thing a, a, a few times. It's really about reading and rereading. It's about figuring out where the character is reacting. What is the character reacting to? How is the character reacting to whatever's being said to them or done to them? So that's the kind of thing. The other thing is learning to work with a casting director during an audition. So if you're actually getting called back or you actually ever go into audition in person, the biggest difference between that and digital is that you're gonna have a live person who's feeding you direction. The biggest tips for me on, again, on, on auditioning are reading the instructions on every casting notice that you come across and especially on those agency websites because if you're really trying to land an agent, it's really important that you learn that you can show them immediately that you know how to follow directions. Not knowing how to follow directions, not being willing to follow directions are the bane of every actor's um, career because you need to do that. You need to know how to um, accept criticism. And sometimes it doesn't always come in the kindest way. And that's something that you have to also think about when we, uh, when in this industry, who you wanna work for, the kind of people you wanna work for. You're willing to work with people who are a little rough around the edges, but they produce great art. Well, then you've gotta develop a tough skin and get used to hearing a lot of criticism, especially about your enunciation or about your choices. You have to think about, well, I really thought that that, um, I made the opposite choice. I thought if I played the opposite, I would, I, I'd for sure get the callback. Well, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes our choices don't land us that callback. You just have to get used to the idea that you're gonna cast a very wide net. It's like fishing and you're gonna, you're gonna land something eventually. It's just a matter of time and really finding the right parts for you. So a lot of that comes down to who, what kind of characters you really wanna play. What are the kind of stories you wanna be a part of telling? And 
then really allowing yourself to have the freedom to explore the different choices and not act based on the kind of acting you've seen. Don't act like Denzel Washington. Don't act like, you know, uh, Meryl Streep. You don't have to be them. You can be you. You have a unique gift, right? You have your own unique voice, your physical features, the life that you inhabit, your spirit, all of that is unique and we need that. In fact, we, the casting director is really hoping that you'll be the one, right? When they call you in. So and if you get the call back, then they're really, really hoping that you'll be it. You know, um, so what are the ways that you can show the physical life of character without telling us overtly, right? Colors, you can dress. So let's talk about auditioning, going in for the audition, what to wear, how to behave, how not to behave. So here's the things to do. Do dress professionally. You know, unless you've been expressly requested to dress a certain way, you should definitely dress with a certain modicum of professionalism like any other job interview. So, but that doesn't mean you always have to be a suit and tie. That could be business casual. That could be a nice, really nice um, sweater. It could just be light makeup. It doesn't have to be really heavy. I wouldn't recommend wearing your, all your Hot Topic golf gear unless, again, the casting call, uh, call or casting notice or casting director has requested it. So do always read the instructions and read the casting and submission directions thoroughly before you submit. Two, do prepare the space before you start filming. Don't ever just assume that you can just whip out your phone and, and get ready unless you have a designated space that you've already pre-prepared as your studio space that you can always just run into real quick and you've got a backdrop already hanging. And otherwise you're gonna have to really pre-stage and think about what's in the background. Really be mindful every time that you shoot, get used to checking your surroundings to make sure that you have a neutral backdrop, that you're really the focal point of the, the filming point and that there's not a lot going on around behind you. So like right now I have a black and these are just curtains right in my living room, but this is a really good um, backdrop to use that's neutral for me to just stand in front of, you know. Again, do consider your lighting. Do take into consideration your lighting, staging. And then of course, do consider, take into consideration your physical movement and your choices. So do, like I say, spike your set with um, tape. In other words, mark the floor some way, some way that won't damage the floor, uh, the boundary lines for how far you can step, um, how many steps you can take until you're out of frame. So set up your camera first, okay? Decide on what kind of shots you want for your submission and whether or not you even need to go through all that trouble because most submissions, they really just want you to do a medium, it's like a medium, oh, this is really good, yeah. Medium like this, up against like a neutral backdrop and most of the time the standard is, it's you about headshot, about from shoulder up and then you're presenting the sides and then you're, you're reading them to someone off camera. So you wouldn't necessarily be looking at the camera unless the, the stage directions have asked you to do that. But if you've memorized the monologue and you're just submitting a monologue, and your, your monologue def should definitely standard. Monologues are ge generally uh, about medium shots. You could do waist up, you could do shoulders up, and it's you talking to someone off screen. Unless you're doing, a, it's like something from like American Beauty or the characters breaking the fourth wall and you're expected to do that. But think about this, even though it calls for it in the script, if it's something from a very popular movie or a TV show and you know, you have a feeling it's kind of been done before, you know what I mean? You're not auditioning with sides from the movie or a script from the movie, then really think about how you could play around with those choices, those angles and um, who you should direct to, who is your focal point or where is the focal point gonna be? So do keep in mind, who is my audience? Um, you know, like I said, what am I doing? All that matters. And know that there's not necessarily a wrong answer as long as we can hear you, understand you, and the choice seems to make sense to us for the character, right? That's really it. So do pay attention to all the directions. Do follow every step and do double and triple check that your clips are just as you want them to be and that it's your absolute best because there's really no excuse in this day and age when you could do, you know, you could record again and again and again and you don't have to go out and buy, you know, $20, $30 for a, a pack of film or all of actual film. So do record, do get comfortable, um, do practice finding a focal point really quickly. Do create a space for yourself to really, um, a go-to audition space for you to be able to step into very quickly, a recording space, um, if you can. Uh, don't 
when you have, here's the don'ts, the biggest don'ts for auditions, um, no matter what you do, are don't um, name drop, don't name all the different things you've done. All you need to do is hand them or send them your resume that really should speak in and of itself everything about you in terms of what you've done and you know who, who you know so you don't need to impress them in terms of telling them everybody you know and everyone you worked with and everything you've ever done but do introduce yourself do provide a little bit of do provide a fun fact or uh, an interesting little quip in your slate I love the fact that many of you've already um, included some really interesting uh, extra bit into your slates um, we just need to practice that and get that really smooth out it should really sound very natural it should not sound fake it shouldn't sound staged so practice that as many times as it takes to feel really comfortable and confident that what you're saying that we believe that you do feel that you're ready to work because you know it should you should be excited you know it shouldn't be um a negative we shouldn't get the ne a negative feeling of anxiety we should feel like a, a positive feelings of excitement right about the, the the opportunity to share a story and to be a part of a story right so don't think about it in terms of don'ts is being this is really bad but um don't name drop don't um don't overshare try to stick to responding you know keeping things clipping because they have to keep things moving especially if you're there in person and you're the hundredth person they've seen and they've got a hundred more to see today um if it's a digital submission again keeping it uh, to a clip it's okay to cut have cuts but make cut between your scenes if that makes sense if it makes sense to do that for an audition yes um, casting just not, isn't as homogenous as it used to be, so it's really important to just really pay attention to the directions um, in every casting notice. And if there's anything that you find suspicious, just send it over to me and I can help you suss it out and see if it's a good fit for you um, overall. Strong characters are endowed with uh, very strong physical choices. They, there's going to be something physical that tells us something about the character. Um, but if it's a drama, then it cannot be overdone. Otherwise, it becomes comedic and it takes us out of that character, right? Character. So once you've decided who you are, what you're doing, where you've just come from, all that should feed into your performance, right? If I know that it was, I was just outside and it's 115 degrees Fahrenheit outside, then when I come into frame, I should, in, in the story, and I mean, if in the story, I've decided that it's 115 degrees out inside instead of the ice age, like in the story, then I should reflect that, you know, I should be hot and sweaty and I should be irritable maybe, you know what I mean? I should have an irritable tone. Um, I may not be uh, the most awake and I seem a little bit lethargic or groggy because, you know, when you're hot, you tend to get tired, don't really move around a lot. And you may not even respond right away and you may be really lazy in how you speak, you know? So just think about how weather affects you. you. So really de developing a strong character has to do with knowing yourself first and being able to separate the, the everyday behaviors that you have, your baseline behavior, and distinguishing that separately from the character that you're gonna put on or going to step into or to have it, right? Um, does that character also get irritable in the heat or not? Do they tend to enjoy the heat? Do they, are they kind of just, um, what we call a desert person, you know what I mean? Think about it, that would be the opposite. Um, especially with characters that we, we see so often uh, in monologues and auditions. So if it's a monologue, definitely choose something that is age appropriate do uh, choose, choose something within two to three years of your age range. Uh, I wouldn't say more than three at most, for most of you, especially going down the chain. Um, no more than at least a year going down, unless you're already 10 or younger. Um, then it, it works It works fine, obviously, if you're younger, um, unless you're tall and have more mature features, then, um, then you can definitely play a little older. But if you have a young looking face, they're always gonna cast you as younger. Uh, that's kind of a fortunate thing because it just means that you'll you'll always have that range. You'll almost always have that range as long as you have that youthful appearance. Um, which means you'll have more opportunities um, than, than most people. Like me, I probably as I age, I continue to wrinkle and everything like that. So I don't know how youthful I'll continue to look. I might get lucky. Um, but I didn't really want to play younger than me. So I didn't really worry about that. See, I didn't think that, uh, of that as a bad thing. I thought of, oh, well, I actually always wanted to play the 30 plus characters because their life stories were much more interesting. 
teenagers are so angsty. <laughs> I just wanted to get her into the real world, you know, and deal with the real issues. And then um, there we are then, right? Let's see, um, what other really big tips have I got for don't to do, uh, things not to do during an audition, especially if we're going in person. Try not to bounce around too much. Um, it's just a, a matter of liability and like safety that they wanna make sure that like you're not gonna bounce all over the set and break things more than anything else. It has nothing to do really with your personality. It just has to do with safety and making sure that you know we're aware of our surroundings and having what we call situational awareness. So do be situationally aware, do be flexible, do be prepared to say the line a hundred different ways possibly. Uh, do be prepared to stay a while, uh, do bring water, do ask questions. Don't um, he ever hesitate to ask a question. Don't ever hesitate to ask for clarification. Uh, also, but don't take too long. Don't be afraid to take risks. Don't be afraid to try a crazy choice. Um, and because if something really speaks to you and you're just like, you know what, it just felt right to do it, then go for it. And you know what, the risk may pay off for you. And if not, then you know what, at least it shows the cast and director that you're willing to take risks. And that's really impressive to us because most um, youthful actors are very, very shy. And it's tough to find kids who are very are confident enough to really take a risk and be, be willing to be seen as silly. You know what I mean? Especially when they're trying to be taken seriously. <laughs> So don't don't be afraid to make make mistakes. Um, and I'll, again, like I say, don't be afraid of saying um or hesitating a little bit. It's okay. It's okay. There's something in you that the casting director might like that. You know, they might like that about you that you're a little hesitant or you know that shyness about you. Like I said, so don't be afraid of. Be, it, there's nothing wrong with being shy, um, but it is important to do smile. And do acknowledge any compliments and just say thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, but don't be over complimentary to the casting directors. Um, don't bring gifts to the casting director, even if it's a picture of a family or if it's a picture of something that they've done that you, you know that they've worked on. Um, don't bring a gift. Um, they, that might come across as you trying to like buy your way into the show um, or bribe them. Let's see, what else not to do? Don't over edit. Sometimes if like, if you don't feel confident in your editing skills and just a simple, just a simple, you know, uh, do shoot, try to shoot in landscape mode as much as possible and horizontally, turning your phone to horizontally. Uh, it looks more professional and a reel when all of your shots have that sort of that, you know, that that wide shot, that wide screen appearance. It looks more cinematic. And I think casting directors really, we um, in this day and age are really appreciating th that mobile phones can take on that same cinematic quality. So making it, the more it makes, uh, more it looks like a professional movie or TV show, um, then, then the more professional you're going to appear to them and it shows your skills. So that's great. But remember that your first and primary um, objective is as an act to tell, to tell the story and to act and have the life of the character. So over editing and over camera angles and focus heavily, too heavily on that, unless it's really called for in a casting um, notice, like on backstage, that's why you might see something like that creatively. But most of the time it's just you of submitting a monologue or sides, which are the, you know, just a few pages from the script that they want you to read for. And you pick the characters that you want to submit for and then you read for them and submit clips that but they may ask you for a real in fact most uh, most submission uh, most casting directors on backstage ask for a reel which means you need to choose a few different scenes that you like that are age appropriate and that fit you one comedic one emotional or dramatic or you know something really dramatic that's contrasting um, they can be uh, monologues from a TV movie or play if you like um, it could be a monologue or a scene, but if it's a scene, just make sure that you have somebody off screen and that you're the one who's favored on camera so that we get to see you and your acting ability. And it's about you, not them, in this moment. Or the monologue is remember that you choose a focal point, again, that's off screen or just above the camera lens, unless you really feel it's really important, like it's called for in the script to break the fourth wall and it's really powerful. Like there are some shows where it is called for to break the fourth wall. So, um, like, well, House of Cards is a good example of a show where, of course, Kevin Spacey's character was breaking the fourth wall all the time because he's narrating and he has to look at the camera. Um, but that's just a few don't uh, do things that you need to make sure of. Um, 
don't wash your when you're doing lighting um do pay attention to the lighting do we talked about paying attention to back, background make sure you have a neutral background black is good uh, or white is good or off, uh, off eggshell um green screen isn't really necessary I wouldn't even do any kind of green screening or even mess with that because they if they call you in they'll probably put you in front of a green screen anyway for a screen test um so you don't have to worry about any fancy special effects or backgrounds like that um it could be really distracting. So just a solid neutral, like this would be not a good um, backdrop for me because it's just, it's cool stuff on the wall, but it's distracting away from me. So it's, you know, as you can see, I, I'm standing in front of a back backdrop. Um, yeah. Boom. Just a few seconds to orientate, you know, and then it's like me. Power shots, you know, right? If you have a character who's giving a speech, like maybe David had his um, political campaign, you know, inspired serial ad, you know, and they, these are always power shots. You know, you see in the Marvel movies, it's always whenever someone's rising to power, you can see the powerful ah, from the ground. They look so tall and fierce. That's a good example of how to get creative. Um, really close up for a long time, long, long, long takes on the eyes are designed to show like shock like that. obviously those zoom, zoom zooming in right for sudden impactful moments um, but that would only work for submission um submissions or casting notes that are allowing you the freedom to record something or submit something but if you're gonna if you need a reel and you need to shoot something then you need to really learn those camera angles real fast and get really creative with experimenting just don't overdo it you know just pick three maybe th three types of shots to work with and get and practice with those and then you can start playing with the angles and pushing the boundaries just like everyone else we all learn the basics and then we start experimenting because that's what just naturally we do as human beings trying to put our own stamp on things so for reels you need a, about a 60 second long reel it should be a compilation of your best moments so comedic dramatic um a commercial a comedic commercial and maybe one emotional commercial just a little bit of everything um or two really good contrasting pieces that you have like a 30 seconds of each that would be good too so it's up to you just remember that it's got to be your best your absolute best angles you've got to be lit the best possible and so it may take time to really get it right. But don't even bother going to pay someone else right now to do any of that because you really, if you are motivated enough, you can do this at home right now, today. So um, do make your own reel, get used to making your own reel. Don't go out and spend $350 or pay me to do it because I get paid $300 to do something that now everybody can do on their phones. So it's really um, unnecessary for you to go out of your way to pay somebody all that extra money when you have every res almost every resource you have in, in your hand right now. Most of you do. And if you don't, let me know. We'll help get you the resources you need. It's not gonna be expensive. Um, we'll set you up with something to get you started at least. Get that foot in the door. Do, if you have a special skill, show off that sh special skill only when it is asked of you, okay? Because your special skill should be on your resume. Your casting director will see that. So you don't need to show off. So don't show off, okay? It's really important not to show off. Do remain humble. Do thank the casting director at the beginning and at the end. Um, even if you don't feel that you did a, a great job, if you don't think it was your strongest performance, just know that is no way of knowing. Sometimes you think you've done a horrible job and then they call you back and then you you ace the callback and then you don't get it. So it's just, there's no way of knowing. You just gotta go in there and absolutely do your absolute bang up best and, and hope that they cast you. That's really it. It's, um, do, just like I said, do be mindful of the ethnicity or the ethnic background of the character that you're gonna play. It should be true to you or as authentic and representative of your, yourself as possible um, or within a range that fits your ethnic group it really should in this day and age we need to be mindful of this um so be 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 mindful that doesn't mean to stereotype yourself or type yourself into a box where you're only limited to your your specific stories about one particular ethnic group but what it does mean is that you should find characters who are um it would be an inauthentic for me to play nina simone wouldn't it right it would just would be inauthentic it wouldn't make any sense at all it would just be wrong that role uh, should be played by someone from that ethnic group 
who represents that culture and really can speak to that, you know what I mean? That experience, it's really important that we, we honor that authenticity in our storytelling. So um, I wouldn't audition with, I wouldn't use a monologue or any scene work from, you know, Nina, unless it was from a white character, just because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to portray a black character. That's just not my experience, and it wouldn't. It would be really inherent, deeply disrespectful. Um, and it actually would be disrespectful for for anyone who doesn't share that particular heritage of Nina Simone. So if it's somebody who just because a person appears to be black doesn't necessarily mean make them a right the right fit either. It really, should be somebody who shares that specific cultural background. And that's what casting is really trying to get to. It's really honoring authenticity in storytelling and representing characters with actors who really do, um, who can bring authentic credibility to the story and their acting because of their experience. It's really important to keep that in mind. So do keep the ethnic background of the characters in mind that you want to portray. There are some extraordinarily powerful women, char female characters out there, and I would love to do any number of monologues from um, from some of these shows because of what the context of the speeches are about. But the thing is, it wouldn't be right because if the, the, the context of the speech is about race, but it's about race from a black person's perspective. So it doesn't make sense for me as a white person to uh, take on a monologue that is about a black person talking about racism. It just doesn't make sense. It would make more sense for me to choose the monologue from the white character in the same, in the same um, story who's sharing their feelings about race and echo, maybe even echoing those same sentiments, if that, if that makes sense. Um, but, uh, another example of something that you could do though that doesn't actually impact your, um, where ethnicity doesn't necessarily come into play here, doesn't have to come into play, where you could play the role even though it, the original character was cast in a particular ethnicity uh, or the, the original actor was a particular ethnic group, would be like uh, Getting Away With Murder is just an example of a show where um, the lead is black, but I'm white. I could definitely do a monologue from one of uh, one of Keating, Annalise Keating's um, monologues, even though the character is black, because there's blackness in terms of the authenticity of the character isn't represented, isn't the focal center, focal point of the story in that scene, at least, or it doesn't necessarily need to be. There are scenes in the show that do uh, do address um, the character's heritage. She goes back home, she sees her mother, who's played by Cicely Tyson, Cicely Tyson, and it's really um, th that in those moments you can see that some of that cultural um, life of the character, some of that ethnicity, but the ethnic, we call it ethnic life of a character how their culture, how, where they're from, or how they're raised, or what they are taught, their value system, and where all that comes from. That is expressed in an episode. That would be inappropriate for me to try to reenact those particular scenes. Um, it is, it's, it's tricky. I would say it wouldn't be impossible to choose one of those um, monologues where she's like in class and she's teaching, but in those scenes where it's really at her at home with her family, it wouldn't be appropriate for necessarily for me because those conversations are reserved for that particular group. Those issues that affect that group don't affect me. I can't speak to them. So it would be inappropriate for me to reenact those particular scenes. But the scenes where she's just in teacher mode, generally that is could be genericized in, that, in other words. In other words, anybody could be, come in and play, basically say that. A man could even say those lines, you know. Actually, it'd be really interesting to see uh, to see a man play that role. Um, in an audition. It could be the first time I'd ever seen a man do Annalise Keating's uh, scenes or anything from these really strong female, the, the, the Shonda um, Rhymes series are really popular. We see those a lot in auditions. But for kids, um, we see a lot of Disney and, and we see a lot of Nickelodeon monologues too, which is really good. Good. Um, but since most of you are teenagers and you, you're thinking, I oh, want to really get into some more mature stuff then just keep that in mind that if you're really trying to get serious you really need to think about when it's appropriate what whether this 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 role this part and these words are really appropriate for me 
can I really carry this? Um, and if you feel like it's a challenge, then challenge yourself and you really feel like the answer is yes, honestly, then do, do it and go for it but do the, and do the best you can. Give it all you got, you know. That's really it. That's all I got for you. Um, I said don't wear a lot of heavy makeup. Don't necessarily dress in character, but you might choose a color or one particular accent that stands out that represents the character. That's okay. It shows a, 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 th a thought that goes into the characterization. Um, casting directors especially love to see that in kids, that kids have thought about that, but we also don't want to see you get too much into character because the, the that's for the director. That, you don't want to do the director's job. The director's job is to decide, um, to interpret the story and bring it to life on the screen. So your job is to simply inhabit that life. But it would be a, a good idea to, to dress somewhat in accordance with the sort of state maybe of the character um, or the maybe one particular color that stands out about the character you like or that emotional state. That'd be okay. Um, we talked about not wearing heavy makeup unless it calls for it. Um, what else to do during auditions? Uh, we've, I mean, it should be a given, but don't lie about anything. Um, obviously, be honest. If you don't know how to do an Irish accent, don't do not do it. If you they ask you, would you be willing to try, then I would be willing to try. Go for it. Um, do your best, you know. Go big or go home. Just go big or go home, no matter what, you know. It's better to make a big impression, I think, than to be forgettable. But... Um, really it developing strong characters um one way to really develop strong characters and to, to, to know to do this and getting to know yourself is to um spend time alone observing your own behaviors um especially in everyday mundane ordinary tasks and then you need to also observe yourself during stressful situations how observe yourself when your reactions to when you're in trouble or when you've made a mistake or when you, um, yeah, when you need to fix something, when you've lost something, get used to spending two minutes a day observing yourself waking up in the morning. Um, observe your behaviors um, and how you talk to people and how you react to different people you're talking to. So the way we uh, behave, our body language may change. Um, if we're, it may change depending on who we're talking to. If we're talking to a girlfriend or a boyfriend, we're gonna behave and our body language might um, be more open and more flirtatious or provocative. Uh, but if we're talking to our parents, it might be more closed off. It might be more open depending on how close you are with your parents. So getting used to your own body and thinking about how you react to things and observing your physical, your own physical life is really important. So brushing your teeth. So you do two minutes of brushing teeth exercise then two minutes of waking up, getting dressed, two minutes getting, uh, getting ready to go to work or school, two minutes coming home from work or school. These are exercises that you should do now as an actor every day to observe your own behavior. That way you can decide whether or not that same behavior or trait makes sense for your character. Because sometimes you'll play a character who is similar to you. Like I told you, I play a lot of teachers, but I play a lot of different types of teachers. I played crazy teachers. I played abusive teachers. I played a serial killer teacher. You know what I mean? I played um, just burned out teachers. I've also played, you know, a teacher with schizophrenia. So not all teachers are the same. We're, all, we're still people, right? So what kind of person essentially? Is this person a nervous person, a confident person? Um, depending on the situation, is this situation one calls for nervousness? And then how do I reflect that in the life of the character? Does the character have a twit, a tick? You know, and then how can I sort of subtly show that like, you know, what happens when the unexpected happens? That's um, another thing as an actor to really uh, nail down is the unexpected. Things that you need to observe about human beings before you can really be a good actor are observing the way people behave when the unexpected happens. And also 90% of our lives, we spend waiting for something. So spending time waiting for something 
is really important to observe in yourself. How do you behave when you're waiting for something? And then when things don't go according to plan, when the unexpected happens, for example, hey, Emma Grace, how are you today? I'm really upset. What? Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really having a bad day. Oh. Well, I was expecting you to say fine or good, you know, because nine, nine, nine times out of 10, whenever you ask somebody how they are, what's the first thing they say? I'm good, I'm fine, chilling, you know, whatever it is. And it's <laughs> so annoying today. Um, but yeah, it's really about the nuances of human behavior that we very rarely will show more, more of our emotional state than we'll actually ever communicate verbally to each other and actually say aloud. So it's finding a way to show the character's emotional state and your emotions and through your physical, the physical life of the character without overdoing it or overacting, right? So if the person has, has a nervous tick, you need to watch a lot of the clips of people with Tourette's or with different types of nervous tics. You need to do a lot of research into what kind of tick is it? Is it Tourette's? How severe is it? Is it really severe? Because I know people who full on jerk, 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 their necks out. For other people, it's more subtle. For some people, it's the language. Billie Eilish is an example of someone with Tourette's and that has uh, affects her speech more than it does um, her physical body but um, I'm pretty sure it does affect her body too, but it's not as bad as she, when she was describing like how it affects her speech. So those are examples of how to bring stronger performances. First, observe yourself. You need to first observe yourself. Pay very close attention to how upset you get when somebody says something you don't like. Do you get really upset really fast? Do you, does it sort of bounce right off you? Do you let things kind of go? I mean, this is the kind of thing you need to really investigate, is really learning yourself first. Once you know how you behave in these types of situations, because these are the, the most common types of situations and types of conflict that you're gonna find in cinema and television are when the unexpected happens during, uh, during an ordinary day, right? Or every day, movies will set us up with the everyday, ordinary world of the character first. Day-to-day -day life, especially in movies about kids, the day-to-day -day school experience, um, being a, a son or a daughter or a sibling, um, your birth order and how all that is affecting your character and all that. Um, there's actually a full inventory of hundreds of questions that, um, that actors uh, use in their acting classes and drama classes. And if you'd like the full inventory of questions to ask yourself, because you're getting right, running out of you know different questions to, to ask yourself to inventory your personality and your physical life, I also think about, do you gesture a lot? Um, do you laugh during movies? My dad can watch a movie and enjoy it immensely, but you wouldn't know it until the end of the movie because he's so enamored or captivated by the movie. He doesn't actually have a lot of uh, emotional responses during the movie, but later on he'll go like, oh, that was great. Or like, oh, that's, you know, that was, that was a terrible movie, but you won't really know until it, until an hour and a half, two hours later, because he's, you can't tell if he's really enjoying himself. Even when he like he would be at church when I was a kid, I couldn't tell if he was enjoying the message or like if he, you know, because he just didn't emote. But then later on, he would say, "Oh, that was really you know, that was really something," you know. Um, and also, he has a very deeply expressive singing voice. So some people are just more emotionally expressive, and some people aren't. So watch yourself in the mirror on camera for a while. Record yourself for like an hour a day for the next week trying these different exercises. Two minutes of brushing my teeth. Pay attention to your routine. Do you brush your teeth the same way every time? Do you always put the lid back? Do you roll up the, do you squeeze the tube? Do you squeeze the tube like this? Or do you do that neat little thing? Do you have one of those little fancy little devices that helps you squeeze it out and keep it all nice and neat? Um, what kind of things really bug you and irritate you? Either about just life in general, people, um, keep a journal. Journaling is really important in acting journal, actor's journal. And the first 10 pages should be your observations of your own behavior. Like I said, two minutes alone, brushing teeth, two minutes, waking up, two minutes, phone call with best friend two two minutes, recording yourself on the phone with your parent, having a positive conversation. Don't get yourself in trouble in order. Don't start a fight or a drama in order to get this. 
these clips, by the way. But I'm just saying, if you happen to get into an argument or with your parents, just say, is it okay if I record myself, just you? Because you want to, you just need two minutes of to watch your behavior. And your parents actually really find that helpful too, because we need to become aware of how we're actually emoting. Because what we think we're putting out or the emotions that we think we're actually expressing, where we may not actually our body may not be responding in the traditional way that people expect, like the emojis, you know what I mean? Not everybody, you know, looks like all those little faces, right? Those are nuances of human emotion that we've been able to create and create a separate represent graphic representation for to represent us because our faces can only stretch and bend and you know twist in you know in so many ways. So it's up to you to really get creative with this idea of observing yourself in different situations at different times of the day um how you behave when you're sick are you really messy do you leave everything a mess like really in terms of are you a messy person or are you a clean person um are you this or this you're kind of learning that already so as you are learning and growing up keep a journal and keep observing your behaviors and then Maybe observe other people. Go to the mall. Watch somebody else for two, watch someone for two minutes and write, write down observations. Do they appear to be a shy person, extrovert? Do, are they talking a lot? Do they to be appear to be a more quiet, methodical, observational kind of a person? Think about that and think about whether you feel like you are like that and how are you similar or different from that person you you're observing for two minutes. Um, and you know, this was easier to before the pandemic to do, but now it's not impossible. Maybe it's just a family member and get permission, you know, get permission. And remember, we're not using this to judge people. We're not using this to, ha to hate on people or to denigrate them. We're using this to learn and study so that we can basically develop a whole treasure trove of characters in your mind. And you're gonna actually start acting out those characters, you know, create yourself a silly character, a fun silly character, and create yourself a serious, really serious character. And then uh, think about the colors that that character exudes and why that color fits that character. What does green represent or mean to you? To me, I think green is like earth, aliens, earth, neon green is aliens out of this world and, you know, neon lights and, you know, raves and festivals and music. And then you have that earth green, which is more Tolkien, which is earthen, elves and fantasy and, you know, um, very, and browns and grays, you know, that earthen tones. Then you have the jewel tones, but regal, royal, you know. So anything that's vivid and bright is gonna have some kind, it's gonna say something compared to something that's dull, right? So think about the backdrops that you're using. I have a red one in my in my bedroom that I sometimes will use. My curtains in my, my bedroom are red. Sometimes it gives a really cool lighting. So just playing with different colored sheets, just buying a, a couple different sets of sheets and playing with backgrounds and get getting different lighting going, but but making sure that you're always lit. And if you're not always lit evenly across your face, just make sure that the shadowing makes sense and that we're still getting that characterization from you. We can still hear you, understand you. We need to be able to hear you and understand you and see you more than anything. That includes being washed out and totally washing your face out. It just needs to be evenly lit. So at mid range, by arm's length distance, it should be the light source. And if you really need it to be dramatic shadow, then only on one side and then about maybe shoulder length from you or about elbow length, elbows distance, the light source. The light source needs to be at least elbow length to at least the tip of your fingers away from your face. And it should always be somewhat directly over your face. You could have fill light, which you have means on the side over here. But if you have, it's all fluorescent lighting, then it's all gonna be white, white, white washed out light. You're gonna get a ghost face. Just nobody wants that. So you wanna make sure you just warm tones. Natural light's really good, but more, if you're outside, then be mindful of sound. So you want one of those cute little mic kits that you can get on Amazon that go with your phone when you just clip, clip it on and you get really perfect sound even though you, you're outside. And those are like 30 bucks. So worth the investment. So do invest in yourself. Do invest in um, really nice paper for your resume and invest in gl a glossy or um, yeah, matte, it's up to you, Matt Finish, um, for your headshots. Uh, do play with the portrait settings and the fancy settings on your phone. Do set your phone to record in 4K if you can, and when you're recording your clips. Um, if you're not confident in your your editing skills, do go to do go to 
Fiverr or do find someone to cut your reel together. If you're not confident in those skills, then make sure that it is worth investing. So yeah, do invest in yourself. Um, do not be afraid to spend money on subscriptions, forecasting, you know, websites and head shops and things, but know that, just know that some things, if you really feel like you already have the skill at and you're willing to take the, and spend the time and take the time to apply yourself to them, it could really pay off for you in the long run because you actually are investing yours in yourself by skilling up in the long, in the long game of the industry in terms of that instant gratification by paying someone else to do it for you in a week versus learning to do it all yourself is more time consuming. But in the end, people will have a lot more respect for you if you can do more than just act. If you know how to cut and every, cut all your demos together and you did it all yourself and you can tell it to a casting director, that is something that, the, you know what I mean, that they might ask you about. And that's something that you can say, but only if they ask you, only if they ask you. Anything else? What not to do? Um, I think the biggest thing is don't argue with the casting director or don't argue with anyone. Um, I mean, don't, just, just don't debate with them. Don't get into an argument, you know, especially when you don't agree, you think that you did a good job and you just think that they're not being fair to you. It's just probably not meant to be. Remember that you'll end up where you were meant to end up one way or the other. You will. So don't, there are plenty of other projects out there. So, um, and don't let yourself be bullied. Those are my biggest do's and don'ts. All right. I hope this helps you. I'm sorry that this is longer than I wanted it to be, but I just wanted to be as thorough as I could. And, um, The last thing I would say is don't do the handheld shots unless you have a stabilizer, like a gimbal stabilizer, um, or the casting submission, uh, casting notice calls for camera movement. Um, just assume that the camera should be in a static posted up position that doesn't move while you're recording. Okay. You should really have the still, um, movement as possible in terms of the camera, unless it's for your reel and it's a whip cut and you need it for a transition. It's okay to have those quick whip, um, whip cuts or whatever like that, like that. But, um, only as transitions between scene work or monologue work in your reel. If you wanted to do one, one long take where you could just keep going back and forth and you do, and you perform, um, both your monologues at one time in one long take, and then you can cut that up later and, That'd be kind of fun, but make sure that you don't over edit it. Don't chop it up too much to the point where we lose the impactfulness of the line delivery or the emotion in your eyes, especially. And that's it. I wish you all the very best. Um, if you are looking for continuing acting lessons, private lessons, I do charge 50 bucks an hour. You can also um, contract with me for 250 bucks for three months. Uh, that's about five sessions a month. And it's a good deal. I hope to hear from you soon.